And all God's people said, take your Bible, turn to the book of Zechariah, the book of Zechariah. If you don't know where that is, turn to Matthew, go back two books, and you'll find Zechariah. If you don't know where Matthew's at, we need to talk after church. Hey, man, I love, I love coming to church. Hey, man. I love being around God's people. But we go through this life out there in this world every day, and, and man, the world drags us down. It, if we ain't careful, it'll pollute us, but we get to come in here with God's people, amen. And when the Holy Ghost shows up and meets with us, he, he gets in amongst us, and it gets good, amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that for the cross. We thank you for the blood. Lord, we thank you for the death of your son, Jesus Christ, on that cross. But we're glad that as we'll see next week, he didn't stay dead. But he got up. Lord, he's coming back. What a day that's going to be. Now, God, we pray for the anointing. We pray for the unction. We, Lord, pray that you bind the enemy from this place. Lord, send him away from here. He's not welcome. There's no spirit welcome but the Holy Spirit. God, we just pray, Lord, that you'll walk the pews of this church this morning, Lord, that you'll deal, uh, Lord, with hearts. Lord, we pray that you'll just uh, move us out of the way, empty us of ourself, and fill us with your spirit. Lord, may you receive all praise, honor, and glory. Lord, may boys, girls, men and women be saved today before it's eternally too late. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you found your place in Zechariah chapter 9, if you would please stand uh, for the reading of God's Word. Before I read the scripture, I'm only going to read two verses and you'll be able to be seated. But before I read the verse, I, you know, I believe as a church we've walked through this life for a long time without faith. We've been walking by sight. The Lord's been dealing with, with your preacher about that. Brother Rick, here's what I want you to do Saturday night. I want you to fill the baptistry up. I believe the Lord's getting ready to use it, amen. Let's go ahead and fill it up. If we don't use it, we'll leave it filled up. If it turns green, we'll empty it and fill it up again. Oh, you a little faith. Where's our faith? Zechariah has nothing to do with the message. I just feel like the Lord wants us to fill it up, amen. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh. The king is coming. Unto thee he is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the fowl of an ass. And I will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. Father, would you bless the reading of your word? We ask in Christ's name, amen. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, we just read of the uh, prophecy from Zechariah of God's, of the Lord's first coming. In Matthew chapter 21, beginning with verse 1, we see this prophecy fulfilled. It says, and when they draw nigh unto Jerusalem, where, where come to Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, go into the village over against you, and straightway... Uh, shall find an ass tied in a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. And as he was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, and the fowl of an ass. And his disciples went and did as 
Jesus commanded them and brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes and they set him their own. And a great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from trees and, and strewed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before that and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. The king is coming. The king is coming. Up to this point, Jesus had, had been withdrawing from the public crowds. He, he didn't desire nor did he want the attention that was, was being brought to him. The Bible, Bible tells us time after time, Jesus uh, of times that Jesus told his disciples and, and those others that he had healed uh, not to tell anyone uh, what had happened. In Mark chapter 9, verse 9, at the Mount of Transfiguration, he, tells, uh, uh, t he told his disciples, Tell no man what things you have seen till the Son of Man uh, be risen uh, from the dead. In John chapter 6, after the feeding of the 5,000, uh, there was a multitude there, and, and Jesus perceived that they were going to come and take him by force. And, and he, told, he told them, my time is not yet come. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 20, he charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. So if I told you this morning that the king was coming, what would you uh, be expecting in a king? What would you be expecting in your king? What if I told you the king is coming? What would you be expecting? Expecting well, the king is coming, amen. Let me illustrate it this way. I, my, at Christmas, daddy didn't buy us a lot through the years. Our kids were spoiled, by the way. He said, like, Amen goes right there. Our kids are spoiled, by the way. At Christmas time, daddy always bought us good, good Christmas. And I kept, I appreciated them so much. I, I kept all my toys, didn't I? I mean, I, I, they in pristine condition, amen? All but what the heat destroyed in my mom and daddy's upstairs because there wasn't any air up there. I kept them in a closet. I kept all those toys up there in their closet. And I began one day to think, well, I need to go get those toys and bring them back to my house because I want to keep them. Maybe one day the Lord's going to bless me with some some great grandbabies, and, and I, I never had a boy to, to give those to. I, I just had Brina, amen, she do. I just had Brina, and, and uh, I, you know, maybe one day that she's going to give me a grandbaby, a boy grandbaby, amen, when she gets married and, and, and gets moved off, and, and maybe one day. But I got all these toys to give them when they come. But I started going through these toys one day, and, and as I was going through them, what I remember being there as a child wasn't there. There was something different. I was anticipating going in that closet and getting those toys out and something being there that it wasn't really there. I never found what I thought I was going to find. Why? Because what I was looking for was not there. It was much different. Not what I was expecting. The Jews in the day of Jesus were looking for a king. They were looking for a leader. They were looking for a savior. And by, but they missed the Messiah. They were expecting a different kind of redeemer than what come riding in on a donkey on, the, on, on Sunday. Hey, listen, they had this idea that they had, they had going through. The, uh, they had the same idea as I had going through my stuff of what kind of king was coming what kind of stuff I was going to find but actually what showed up was different than what they were expecting they were looking more for a military style leader that would come in and, and overthrow the Roman Empire not some humble servant riding on a donkey they were looking for someone who would come in and inflict suffering on who was uh, uh, controlling the day instead of one who would come and suffer so they missed the king
king. Hey, listen this morning. The king is coming. What kind of king are you looking for today? There are people looking for a genie king. Amen. They're looking for a king that will come along and grant them their every wish. There's people looking for a microwave king. Hey, pop it in and everything's done instantly. They're looking for a king to come and solve their problems instantly. Well, good luck with finding a king like that because it ain't going to happen. But it ain't going to happen. But I'll tell you what will happen. If that's the kind of king that you're looking for, you're going to miss the king. The king is coming. This world and, and many in the church, it's, it's difficult for us, especially the younger generation. It's difficult for us to accept the fact that we need a king. It's difficult for us to accept the fact that we need a savior or we need a leader. Why? Because we want to rule our own lives and, and we want things the way we want them and not how God says they ought to be. Listen, the king is coming. We tolerate people giving us instructions. We tolerate it because we got to. But the king, a king riding in on a donkey, it's not what we were expecting. It's not what they were expecting. A king that would come and, and control every aspect of our life. Somebody like that's a different story. Controlling our family, controlling our job, controlling our church, controlling our marriage. Listen, God needs to be controlling our marriages, amen? Controlling our stuff. Listen, the king is coming. Zechariah is telling us, rejoice greatly, O oh, Zion, daughter of Zion. He's saying, you want us to rejoice. Listen, if you go back to the beginning chapter of the beginning of chapter uh, 9 of Zechariah, Alexander the Great is wreaking havoc on the people around Israel, uh, Israel's neighbor. He's wreaking havoc. And he's telling, Zechariah's telling Israel, rejoice, a king is coming. You want us to rejoice in a king like Alexander is coming and wreaking havoc? No, 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 no. He's not talking about that king. He's talking about a different kind of king. Hey, Hey, listen, he's talking about the King Jesus, amen, is coming, and that is exactly who Jesus is. He is one. Listen, we don't make him Lord. He's always been Lord, but the King is coming. I'm going somewhere. The first coming, verse 9, and then Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Zechariah reveals to us the uniqueness of the coming King. He, he reveals to us the uniqueness of the coming king. First of all, we see in Zechariah chapter 9, his person. Look at this. In this person, he, he says, O Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, uh, behold, the king cometh unto thee. And then he says, he is just. The person, King Jesus, that's coming is just. Verse 9. The Hebrew word there is a sadiq. It's a it's a right. It's it's relight, uh, righteous. That is just, blameless, accepted to God as as sinless. The one come riding on a donkey is just, and he's coming to declare righteousness. The one riding on a donkey is not like the leader in the first part of this chapter. He's completely different. Alexander was wreaking havoc on Israel. No, this king was just and this king was righteous. I rejoice today knowing that King Jesus is righteous and he's just. Not only does he tell us his, 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 his person, he tells us his purpose. And having salvation. Zechariah revealed the purpose of, of this king's coming. The Hebrew word there is Yasha, which means to, to be saved or to have safety. Having salvation. Zechariah is telling us that this king is, is, is bringing something with him, and what he's bringing is salvation. They were looking for a king, but they were looking for a military leader to come in and stop what was going on in that day, much like we would like to see something stop what's going on in our day. But he was bringing something much more important than peace on this earth at that time. He was bringing salvation that would ultimately bring the ultimate peace. Amen. 
This is why he is here to start with, amen, to bring salvation. He's fulfilling the mission that his father sent him to bring. But he's riding on a donkey. He's riding on a donkey. Vicky had a little baby donkey. Not she didn't, her donkey donkey. Zachariah tells us his position. He says, lowly. I thought some leader was coming. I thought some king was coming. He says he's riding on a donkey. He's just. He's bringing salvation, but he's lowly. The Hebrew word there is ani, meaning poor, uh, afflicted, humble. That's not who they were expecting. He, hey, listen, he was lowly. In Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, we see him high and lifted up. That's who they wanted, high and lifted up. And, and we saw the cher cherubims shouting, holy, holy, holy. That's what they were doing. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. That's what they were expecting. Yet he came lowly, born in a cattle shed. Worked as a carpenter, was despised and rejected by his own. Listen, his own. Hey, listen, the cattle on a th he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, yet he had nowhere to lay his head. Hey, listen, he had the throne in heaven, yet he came as a servant. He came lowly. That's who Zechariah tells us as he was. He also tells us in verse 9, in his first coming of his power, in Zechariah's day, Conquerors and kings and rulers would, would come riding a stallion with chariots following them. But our Lord Jesus, he didn't need that. He come riding on a donkey. He could have built a palace at his spoken word. At any time, he could have, he could have uh, called 10,000 angels to come and rescue him. Listen, he could calm the raging sea with just his word. Listen, but he rode into town. On a donkey. That's not who they were expecting. The king was coming. The king come. And they missed it. The Jews were not looking for that kind of king. So what started on Sunday with shouts of praise. Ended on Friday with shouts of hate. They were Hosanna, Hosanna. And then they crucified him. It went from, listen, triumphant entry to terrible execution. It went from hell him to nail him. It went from crown him to crucify him. It went from blessed redeemer to blaspheming rebel. Listen, and they said crucify him. They missed the king. Hold on. Hold on. The king's coming back. Look at verse 10. It says, and I will cut off the chariot from Ethram and the horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall speak peace unto the heathen. And his dominion shall be from sea even to sea and from river even to the ends of the earth. His first coming, he come and he was crucified. He's coming back, if you would, the second time. And he's not going to a cross. I thank God for his first coming. I praise the Lord for his second coming. Listen, the church is going to be raptured out of here. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me, if you would, to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. I'm glad the king is coming. I'm glad he come. I'm glad he's coming back. The church is raptured out of here, in and we see in this chapter 19 that, that we have the marriage supper of the Lamb, uh, and then in, beginning with verse 11. Beginning in verse 11, we see the second coming. He's already raptured the church. The church is in heaven. <laughs> Somebody, <laughs> are you saved this morning? Are you saved this morning? Hey, listen, the church has been raptured, and we're in heaven with the Lord at this point. Amen? He says here in verse 11, And I saw heaven open. If you go back to Revelation chapter 4, John said, I saw a door open. And now heaven's open. Heaven's opened up. And behold, a white horse. The first time he come on a donkey. The next time he comes, he's coming on a stallion. He's coming on a white horse. 
And he that sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, in his head are many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with vesture, dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies, here we are, which were in heaven, followed him upon a white horse, clothed in fine linen and white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword uh, that hath his... Uh, that he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the, the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. Verse 16, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of of lords we also see at his second coming his person his purpose his position and his power compare this to his first coming listen the first time he came he came and the enemy thought that he had completed victory he listen he didn't stay dead amen the first time he come riding on a donkey he wound up at Calvary's hill on a cross shedding his blood for you and I and then they took him down from the cross and they put him in a tomb and they rolled a stone in front of it and Satan was rejoicing. Amen. He was having a time. Him and his demons were rejoicing. We finally brought complete victory over this man that rode in on a donkey claiming to be the king of the Jews. Oh, but when we get to Revelation chapter 19, the king is coming. The king is coming. He's coming riding on a white horse. Amen. And he's coming to put an end to the evil forever and forever and forever. Oh, he only thought that he had victory. He only thought that he had victory. The second time he's coming, he's coming. Jesus is coming with total victory over the powers of evil. In his cross, in his resurrection, Christ won a great victory over the powers of the devil. But in his second coming, he will execute that victory completely. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 15. Amen. Look at that verse. It says, in his mouth goeth a sharp sword. You know what that sharp sword is? His word. Back in the day, we had this saying, I mean, something, something was said, we'd say word. Word. Amen. The word. He's coming back with a sharp sword in his mouth. I like this. There's nothing new from Genesis to Revelation. Jesus is pictured as possessing the authoritative word from the very beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation. In John chapter 1, Jesus said, John says, And in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. At creation, Jesus spoke the words, Let there be light, and there was light that came into the world. It was uh, by the same authoritative word that Jesus caused the devil to flee from the wilderness when he he took him out and tempted him. It was the very word of God that caused the legions of demons that took him out into the wilderness and tempted him to flee. It was the same, listen, it was the same word of God that caused the legion of demons to come out of the possessed man and go into a swine. It was the word of God. Listen, it, in each of these instances, the way he brought about the power was by his word. Listen, when he comes riding on that white horse out of heaven, the army Armies of God are coming with it. That's us, amen. Clothed in white, fine linen. Woo! How, <clears throat> Rick Flyer used to walk across the stage like this. Amen. Hey, hey, listen, he was fine. He was fine. He was dressed in the best robes ever. But when we come back riding on a white horse, Rick Flair ain't got nothing on us. Woo! Jesus, hey man, Jesus is coming back, and we're gonna be riding on a white horse. I'm so excited, I can't even talk, amen. This stuff's been bundling up in me. Listen, the Bible says back up. I done got ahead of myself. Back up to verse 11. I tried to get him here before I got him here, amen. Verse 11 says he was faithful and true. You see, he come riding on a donkey. He told him who he was. He told him who he was. He gave him his word, didn't he? When we get to Revelation chapter 21, he says, 
I told you, boys, I was faithful and I was true. He said, I'm de- he's completely dependable. He's completely reliable. He's completely trustworthy. He, s- he told them when he came the first time. He says, I'm the truth. He says, I'm authentic. I'm, I'm genuine. I am the real thing. He told them. And then when he comes back the second time, he proves it. Listen, when Jesus acts, you can trust him. The king is coming. The king is coming. I can almost hear the trumpet. He's getting ready to rapture the old church out of here. And then all hell's going to break loose on this earth. You think it's bad now? Hang on. I don't want to be here. I ain't going to be here. I'm going to be in heaven with the saints. Amen. And then he's coming back to this earth. Faithful and true. The word of God. Revelation 19. And when he comes back. With his spoken word, he's going to put an end to what's going on. The sword's never going to be lifted. The army's coming with him. But I don't read anywhere that we're going to fight. Listen, there's no fight. There's no fight. He, He has no competitor. He has no competition. He has no rival. He is champion there's no fight to be fought because there's nobody that can defeat him the king is coming with a sword a staff and a wine press listen this morning the king is coming he's coming the first time he come he come to take care of the sins of mankind your sins and my sins died on a cross As we'll see next week, rose from the dead. One day, he's going to rapture the church. Have you made preparations for the rapture? You see, the next time he comes, he ain't coming to earth. He's just going to step out on the cloud. Our musicians will come, our our instruments will come. He's going to step out on the cloud. He's going to call the church home. Let me ask you a question this morning. Have you made preparations for the rapture? Have you made preparations for the rapture? As we stand, heads bowed, and eyes are closed all over this place. After the rapture, he's coming back to earth. As we've already said, he's going to put an end to the enemy forever and forever and forever. I've never been a horse rider. Tried it once and he didn't like me and threw me off of him. But because I've made preparations, one day I'm going to get to ride a white horse. He ain't going to throw me off, Charles. (laughs) Because I'm coming with the king. The king is coming. Will you be riding in that army? Or will you miss the rapture and be stuck forever and forever and forever without Jesus? You know what's going to make hell really bad? It's going to be hot. It's going to be awful. Hell's going to be bad because we're going to spend it forever without Jesus Christ being with us. I don't want to miss it. I'm not going to miss it because I've been covered in the blood. What about you today? Will you come? Will you come today and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Listen, we've prayed for revival. And here's what we prayed. One of our prayers was this, is that people that have sat in the church all their life and people thinking they've been saved will get saved because they're lost. Just because you sit in a church your whole life don't mean you're going to heaven. Amen? 
Listen, don't worry about what people think because what matters is what God knows and He knows your heart. You may be here today and as a Christian and man, you just threw in the towel. You know, I pray that you'll get a fresh glimpse of what Jesus did for you on the cross because the King is coming. Are you ready for the King?